Murphy and the Czech sleeves and the back marker of the right, final is presenting a Nelly a major down the home straight a three time winner. So happy and fine for Alex Sales' yard on the near side, conquered all of Europe on the far side. In fact, conquered all of Europe. May have just rose in front, but Happy and Fine was pretty slick over that and is maybe just nudging into a lead again. Kepage is in behind any money in these Lord markets, Kerak, that's then very dangerous. Nelly. Fence number three is an open ditch. All getting over pretty well. Happy and Fine key be out nice on the and early. Side, right over towards the far side, conquered all of Europe. Kepage, a five time winner, comes next. Second start over fences for him as they get over the next. Kepage, a winner here at Leicester over hurdles back in 2019. Lord of Kerak in the blue colours towards the near side. And the back marker remains presenting Nelly. Fence number five will be the final fence next time round. Happy and fine, a two-time winner and third on chasing debut at Weatherby. Very low and neat over that and was quick over it. The far side conquered all of Europe, looking for a first win over fences today. And in behind happy and fine towards the near side is Lord of Kerak, who's alongside Kepage. The back marker presenting Nelly about... Three, four lengths off the back of them. Circuit to go in this happy 18th birthday. Harry Cochran, novices, handicap steeple chase. So leading is happy and fine. So you fine. see there's a lot of time left. We're not even halfway through the race. And the you come Kepage in quite a bit. So Kerak, who are close that's my the thinking. Pair. There you go. It's only 15 pence. But as they swing around the turn. I didn't get everything matched. So I would. Straight. Still got 10 left to jump. Conquered all of Europe. Odds on you need a bit more money. On the rail. Just being ridden along out wider is happy and fine as they now clear the water and as they get over that the first four only a length between them still four lengths back to presenting nelly next fence will be an open ditch ridden the long conquered all of europe on the inside widest of all happy and fine Happier! lord of kerak and kapage running between yeah it should have got a bigger stake in ditch. unfortunately kapage before but... fractionally in behind them good jump by lord of kerak there and the back marker is presenting nelly so Lord of Kerak and Sean Bowen on 113 winners for the season has the lead. Out widest of all, happy and fine and Keelan Woods towards the inside. So, you, yeah, you can see basically that price did come in massively. There was an overreaction. There, tucked in behind. Three lengths back to presenting Nelly and Fergus Gillard. So they get over the next and they now run downhill. Just about Lord of Kerak without wider, happy and fine. Kepage is only a length behind. Running out of time here. Conquered all of Europe, ridden along again on landing. And then we have presenting Nelly. Still in touch at the back of the five, just getting a little bit closer. Heading towards two more down the back. Lord of Kerak joins I'm out of here, man. Happy and fine and Kepage on the inside. Presenting Nelly now in the in. And conquered all of Europe is toiling in behind them. Last fence down the back is five outs. And uh, Three of them more or less in line. Happy and fine just about touched down in front from Lord of Kerak. Kepage... Still saving ground on the inside under Jack Tudor, presenting Nelly tries to close up on the front three. Conquered all of Europe is at the back of the five. So happy and fine is widest of all. In between still Lord of Kerak and up against the rail is Kepage. Four lengths to presenting Nelly being pushed along to try I'm and... I'm out of here, gap. man. And a long just get that through. Conquered all of Europe and Theo Gillard. Get it through. Four left to jump as they now enter the home straight. Happy and fine with... Here you go, and Kerak that's and Kepage. it. He's I'm not going to go any further. Still traveling quite well. In um, <laughs> just purely. Sucker. Sometimes I would go up to that red time, but I'm with the markets being so thin at the moment. I'm, I'm definitely not going to trade into the reds. It's just far too dangerous because you can see that if a horse does something happens, look how little money it would take to move that right the way in. A few hundred quid, and you're pushing the price in, so it's not worth it. Um. Looks like the favourite is going to win it, but um, yeah, you see, there was plenty of opportunity, especially earlier on. That first trade I put in only got 15 pay. Um, yeah, I just didn't get enough through on that, unfortunately. That should have been a pound, really. So, I should have got three quid off that. Um, you can see that actually, there's still, I didn't realise how far they had to go because it looked like it came from the timer, but it depends on the ground, so the timer can show. Like there's a bit more time. I could have stayed in a bit longer, but um, you can see like, how much that did actually move about still. We're coming to 1 5. You see it's flashing right up here. Right up now, look, look. Whether it wins or not, you see how much movement there is. You wanna, what you want to be looking for is early on, not at the end of the race. Like that. Anyway, quick 188 on the first. Uh, Market suspended. Race. Mainly looking for over exaggerations, uh, if we can find them. 
Uh, I'm only going to be trading anything long as well because the markets are so weak. I'm not interested in any, anything really shorter than two miles. Jacket, widest of all. Stormy flight, been well back during the course of the morning. He's in third place, but only a neck down. And two okay, legs back to honour the job as they make their the way market. towards the water jump, which will be number five. So Psycho in the centre, there's a short price flight. Paper. And Benny's king on either side one, as they race towards the water jump for the solitary time. Heading towards it. All over OK on a De Jong. Very aware of the, the back um, as they race towards short price flavor. the plain one before an open niche. And so Psycho picks up by a length there from Stormy Flight. Gone down there, no money, so big came King in. King on a De Jong still about three lengths behind the third place horse. As the Psycho, looking for a stride, heads towards the ditch. But obviously, it's over from Stormy Flight the favourite falls, King, I've got to be straight out. That's three fences, most of anything about anything falling. He's still in third place, but on a De Jong is now about to join Benny's King at the back of the pack. So... Say having raced did come right the way in, just about got two by Same two. We didn't now. get that 24 quid the match there. Off the psycho, you can see it's gone back up to where he's came. So, looks like I've the missed the overreaction wide. on that race. And on it did happen now in the finish. pink and black colors was Dormy Flight and Sasaiko still both jumping Good accurately. I'm going to change that starts to close now in third and receiving a reminder to do so as the front two just are inclined to get away here slightly and Benny's King is continuing but is 25 lengths adrift and losing right. further ground so on the home turn stormy flight for Rex Dingle leading Paul O'Brien on Sasaiko about four to five much that to I'm out of here man their progress around this home turn and they remain a long way clear of Benny's King. I'm not sure he's going to continue Come for on. too much longer, but we'll see when they reach the fences in the straight. Oh, Stormy that's so annoying. That is a problem. Psycho pushing along now in second. With low liquidity. I've two. got part of them <laughs> <under> <laughs> the middle. <laughs> 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 Dijon hasn't lost any more ground, given a reminder to try and close by David Noonan as they head up the home straight. Stormy flight on the left-hand side, right-hand side for Psycho. Unfortunately, I've got to try and get this out. Dijon Dijon is back in third place as they race towards the oh, no, we're out. last fence. Stormy flight rises, but, but that only was half a clear. So Psycho sticking to the task over away to so the. So a lot of people might say, oh, "Well, you got lucky there," but I, but it's using the race timer. I certainly don't want to be involved now. I don't care which one wins it. You can see it's pretty close. Either way, still. I'm well just look. No, no, I okay. So Stormy flight did go on a win, but with how close it was, market it was sort of suspended. Seventy-five pence. I saw that pretty <laughs> but you know. Got to protect that bank. Um, I did miss a couple of opportunities. Like over that. Then we have the grey Royal Mayor, who won for the first time at Fosslas. Annoying. Over fences last time. Out wider is Moon Eagle, searching for a first win. Horse wears a brown nose band in the red and yellow colours. And just short of a bubble, who's had wins at Stratford, Bangor and Taunton over fences. Unlucky at Ludlow last time, when still very much involved. The bank. So sweeping around the bend first time. So that's where the SP was. I'm going to go back place. up there, Valdez trying on this overreaction. Now bear in mind we've got fences. the race farmer. We can see we're right at the start. Just because he's in front, I don't place, big norm. much at all. Pursued by Royal Mare, then the back pair, Moon Eagle, up on the outside. Of just that's short of a bubble. There's about six lengths separating the six runners as they... You see what I'm doing? This is a game of patience. Down the home straight and it's Phil Illico who leads from Val Dancer. Using the race time, I could have got out there to 70k or whatever. So I'm pretty confident Mayor, that we'll go back up there at some point. Just short of a bubble. Hopefully before the, uh, the home straight, halfway point in the race. Fence number five. Fence number six will be the first of the open ditches. Phil Illico still on that far side. John Janil Jr. on board with Val Dancer, Charlie that. Deutsch on the near side. Money North there is holding up at the moment. Ditch. Then we so have to get Big out Norm there, in third place for James Best. Royal Mayor Jack Tudor. Come on, get you up there. Edwards and the back marker just short of a bubble and Ben Jones. Here's another plain fence and took it well. One Come more on. down the home straight will be fence number eight. So it's Phil Illico on the far side, Val Dancer saving ground. So loads of time to go. We're not even halfway through the race, bear in mind. Big Norm. They're followed through by Royal Mayor as they take the next Maybe fence. I've been a bit greedy here. I really regret that. <laughs> by just short of a bubble. It wins from the front. Moon Eagle. Still fairly well grouped as they now head past They're the not even halfway through the race. So. One more to be jumped down the far side. Phil Illico with Big Norm and Val Dancer out wide. Go on. Cool. Smash up there quickly. Dancer right up on the outside 
Oh, and there you go. And we weren't in the Don't care if it wins. Mary Monty will lead the turn out of the back straight. So Mary Monty has the advantage from starved off Bert Wilson as they make the bend. Uh, just behind these is Cinderella with Tidal Storm and the improving Darne. Well, Williams got onto the heels of the leaders in company as well uh, with Battle March. And this little cluster, I'm out of here, man. Or nine, are now well clear of the others. So Mary Monty will lead the turn up the home straight and have the advantage from in second Bert Wilson, then Starvidoff, that two pair have never been far away. Well, Willia is making ground yeah, on the no, inside as the little Mary Monty just tries to kick away slightly as they make their way up the home straight towards the third last. Mary Monty pursued by uh, Cinderella, and then behind these on the outside, Darnie continues to make ground. Horse with the noseband, Starvidoff comes next as they make their journey up towards the first uh, in the home straight. Mary Monty will arrive at it in the lead. Mary Monty is over with Cinderella. Oh, well, will you still there towards the inside? Darnay towards the outside as the leaders make their way now down towards the next flight of hurdles. Mary Monty is over in the lead with Cinderella. Well, will you paddles through it? Darnay towards the outside with Starvidoff. As Mary Monty Defense coming under... over in third position. Okay, again, looking Johnny for an overreaction in the market. The Lonnie Moss Borelier, next plane oh, fence. Well, about halfway through the race, aren't we? Uh, brisk over that. Lonnie Moss Borelier again just pushed along, having jumped in at the back of the four runners. Johnny Mac sits in third position. Still two more down the back to take. Benny Silver almost over jumped that. On the inside is how you play the game. Johnny Mac is two lengths behind. Then comes Lonnie Moss Borelier. Here's the final fence down the far side. Five from the finish. Benny Silver on the outside of how you play the game. Not much between these two. Two and a half lengths back to Johnny Mack and about three, four lengths back to Lonnie Moss Borelier. So quite a long way. I'm out of here, man. Going around the top turn and about to sweep down the hill. And it's Benny Silver on the outside of how you play the game. Two lengths back to Johnny Mack in third position and about a four length gap back to Lonnie Moss Borelier. He's just trying to close up on them again. So four left to take. How you play the game and Benny Silver, not much between these two. Johnny Mack is in third position. And then comes Lonnie Mack, who's in behind, just being pushed along to try and close on the leaders. Four left to jump then. Benny Silva, with how you play the game. Not much between these two still. This is four out. They're three lengths. Clear, but <laughs> Johnny Mack, Lonnie Moss Borelier. So Benny Silva, just going the better at the moment on the far side of the the game. Followed by Johnny Mack. Three out the final. They closed off. And a mistake by Johnny Mack in third place. Then Lonnie Moss Borelier in fourth. It's Benny Silva. Yeah, so, you know, we've got plenty of time left, as you can see. Um, they've still got a bit of distance on the race. Uh, it looks like Benny Silva is going to win it, but I don't mean it will. It's because there's still a good bit of time left, you see, and that's that's why I always use the race time early. You can see now they're moving apart again. Uh, not got another jump left. So, But it is a case of getting out. Um, with plenty of time, essentially. Um, it's really important to do that. So, yeah, 3.48 or 3.40... 3.48, Right, let's move on. Codgel looking on as they come towards the Paxton's fence. Number one of uh, the nine they jump here today with the two fences being taken out. One or two slightly awkward. Do you know what I mean? was a little bit... Uh, a little bit awkward, but um, he's in touch on the outside in the red jacket. Coming up then to the Vickers fence now. We'll try and give these sponsored fences all a bit of a mention. It's important. They support the game. Here they come then towards the water jump, the Vickers water jump. And Treshnish, the leader. Orgaru on the inside. Trevedor, Fair of the Grey. And then, do you know what I mean? With That's On the inside then, he's the boy who's not been unsupported today as they go towards the next plane fence. And Cudgel looking on at the back in close attendance and there was a mistake on the inside then by Augeroo and he's getting a reminder from Sam Coulter as they race away up towards the the next fence which is the open ditch here number four oh and a mistake there by do you know what I mean that was a a much more serious error that one left his hind legs behind there but he's still in the contest as he tries to warm up here Back in trip today, do you know what I mean? Heading towards the next one, which is uh, number five in a straight line as they head cool. towards that <laughs> point. Good, good, good camera picture, did it? Into that fence and away over it, okay. So they're all. Hadir! 
there. Still standing here, all six of them, as they move down towards the left hand. Oh, we just missed that. We just missed that by a couple of ticks. Which is a shame. Inside Augaroo and on the outside, then uh, the grey Trevador. Got a lot more time left the saddle to do this board. one. Attract them by He's the Boy on his chase and handicap debut with Cudgel in close attendance. And you know what I mean, whose jumping has been a little bit shabby to begin with, is in last place. He's only about four lengths off the speed, though, as they move down the back straight here, heading towards... Uh, I'm out of here, man. ...number six here. Let's see how they jump this one. Trevedor Fev on the outside of Tresh Nishman on the inside, Augaroo. Behind them, Cudgel. Loves it round here, Cudgel. And then, still looking on, is do you know what I mean? As they head down now towards the... Seventh fence, only about five lengths would cover these runners. I'm out of here, man. In between them, just showing your head, Ryan Mania. I tried to cancel that off. Down towards it now. Didn't quite get it. Good jump there by all of them. And <laughs> sucker. Fair, the Carlisle win. Right. Might have to the get take a look. Yet to win a race. Can he do it today? They're about to two lengths of the good over in fourth place. Then he's the boy, Cudgel. Six-time winner, eight times placed here in uh, 24 starts at Hexham. Is Come on, pump this around. Just get it out. What I mean, warming to his task now. In the Can't win them all, can you? In the hands of Tristan Durrell, as they move down now towards the second last, which is the open ditch. Only about uh, four lengths, if anything, would cover them as they took that. Better jump there by, do you know what I mean? Not such a good leap there by Augaroo. Would have got away with it. Driven but... now. Tresh Nish, the leader, but only narrowly, though. Trevor would have got away with it and would have made the, the profit. But, well. you know, you've got to stick to the rules. It, and it was I mean? too late. Colors on the inside of so, I took the loss. I'd rather lose eight to seven on his eight hands. Eight He's eight in and, fifth um, place and being driven. Losing a hell of a lot more. Looks so like this round is pretty tight. Punishing Hill here inside the final quarter mile of this top P handicap chase um, and yeah the ground is really slow I've really forced serious. to get about the hex from up here clinging on very grimly on the outside but, there, there you go between them it was the right thing to do as far as I'm concerned drawn clear. Cudgel is sticking at it it's just backed off the first slightly with golden sovereign so the open ditch and then a long run before the next as they are all over out in the lead is lyrical genius early on as they'll begin the Turn, locate them towards the back straight where all of those fences will be omitted. In second is Domaine de Lille. Up on the outside is Broomfield Present in the green and yellow colours with the nose band. Silver in disguise is the grey horse in fourth place, just ahead of Foxborough in the black and red. Then behind those we have Polish, and last of all, early on, is Golden Sovereign. So now they'll Oakley, turn Oakley. Hill and make their journey down the back straight pie passing the four obstacles they would usually have found there so we lose those on both circuits so eight of them in all are taken out which leaves us with 13 to take during the course of the journey and so we've got a nice leads long race here um, as they run downhill broomfield present is in third place early on they look for overreaction so early in fourth and early on. In fifth polish in sixth place and a couple of the markets back are moving okay then as they climb they uphill and begin to make their way now four tips through the imagine. removed hurdle wings and the wings of the fences that are being omitted lyrical genius with the advantage an advantage just over a length early on domain de Lille in second place third is disputed by broomfield present who is on the outside of silver in disguise no, then in fifth place is Foxborough, Tiny, what we Polish, there? and Golden Sovereign is at the back. Pay. So Lyrical Genius just extending the advantage slightly and just pushed on by Lily Pynchon just to up the pace slightly. Domain De Lille in second, Broomfield Present third, Silver in disguise. And that's bypassing the third of the four in the back straight. So we're just about to get to the point where they will rejoin the main race course, having gone past all of the four. And out in the lead is Lyrical Genius, who will lead towards the Plymouth Bend, with in second, Domain de Lille. Two lengths back to Broomfield Present, with Polish, who made a bit of ground on those run with the omitted fences, while Silver in Disguise has just drifted back so to the So there's plenty of time, you see, for this crash to, well to go back. As they make the turn. Could have gone for more bits, but a lot more to the seven, as they complete the turn in. So out in the lead, it's Lyrical Genius. So I like the idea of getting in on Polish. Next four fences. 
by a length from nice. Dwayne DeLeal, two yeah, extra room for present. Silver in disguise just be bumped along intermittently by Alan Johns. Polish on the outside has made some progress with Foxborough. And still the white face of Golden Sovereign whips in the field. So they've completed what was a very long run between fences two and three. The next seven will come up in oh, so after succession. So Lyrical Genius over in the lead. Broomfield present on the outside of Domain de Lille. Foxborough Oof. and Polish with Silver in disguise Foxborough and Golden doing. Sovereign. Lyrical Genius again is good over the second of the four up the home straight. Has an advantage of a couple of lengths from Broomfield present on the outside of Domain de Lille. And Broomfield present was closer over that. Fourth place for Foxborough, Polish and Silver in disguise. And two links to Golden Sovereign. So they remain very well grouped indeed as they head on See down. See what I mean? It came in and it went a bit back, back up there already. Lyrical Genius will have the advantage. From the main delay, really it long back into second past Broomfield Present. Fourth place now with Polish on the outside of Foxborough. And Silver in Disguise, who still disputes that position. It's just being ridden along on the inside intermittently. With two links back to Golden Sovereign, who's just been happy to lob around at the back. Those with the white face. As Domain de Lille and Lyrical Genius just press on slightly as they once again reach three fences on this side of the course and then there'll be that long run before they take the fourth last. Lyrical Genius from Domain de Lille towards the inside in the brown colours, Broomfield present towards the outer, big leap by the leader. Polish in fourth, ahead of Foxborough, Silver in Disguise and Golden Sovereign. The next is a plain one. Lyrical Genius is over in the lead. Domain de Lille, Broomfield present. Polish Foxborough making a place Golden Sovereign and Silver in Disguise is now beginning to toil as they head towards an open ditch which is five from the finish but a long way from the fourth last as they take that and Silver in Disguise is losing touch with the others at the moment. Five to six lengths off the back end, a reminder and now this it's long way to go. run down the back straight long way to go, the first in the home straight. Lyrical Genius with Broomfield present now showing in a clear second. Domain de Lille still there on the inside in third, but has forfeited a position at least for the moment. Polish moving on, closer in fourth, there. then Foxborough pushed along. Golden Sovereign, who's just been ridden quietly and is still well in touch under Michal Nolan. And Silver in disguise off the back end by an increasing margin of round about six lengths. To be fair to Silver in disguise, it's held stationary at round about six lengths. Of money there, so. At the moment, it's looking a little bit of a laboured effort as they run downhill. I'm out of here, man. Lyrical Genius, who's made every single yard to this point, well, leads Polish. Broomfield well, present. And Domain de Lille, oh. Polish up on the outside, is making some ground now with Foxborough in fifth. Come on. Golden Sovereign and Silver in Disguise. That gap has now increased. As they run downhill, Silver in Disguise would be round about 10, 12 lengths now behind the sixth last horse. Lyrical Genius having to work as they begin the climb uphill. Broomfield present. Domain de Lille, Polish and Foxborough with Golden Sovereign still right on their heels. And the six runners, if anything, are more tightly grouped than they were half a mile ago. Come on. With the exception of Silver in Disguise. To lower that down a bit. So Lyrical Genius being set alight quite a long way from home. Lily Pynchon decides needs to make this more of a test of stamina. Broomfield present in second. I'm out of here, man. Place, that, Foxborough, Red that Cat, now. Polish Pink Jacket and Domain de Lille who's under pressure now to hold that position. And still Golden Sovereign. Just waiting in the wings. He is in sixth place. And looking for Silver in Disguise. Is still going. 15 to 20 lengths behind the other six. Lyrical Genius. Forcing Lily Pinch into push and shove. Cajole and kick. As the lead from Broomfield. <laughs> turns that on the Foxborough has made I'm mind going in the middle a little bit. This because it's such a long race. Long the efforts of Lily Pinch to get a few off the bridle. Appear to be working slightly. Domain de Lille in fifth place and Golden Sovereign for the first time is ridden to try and close. Picks off Domain de Lille relatively readily as now they'll be beginning to turn towards the fourth last. Lily Pynchon, all action ride so far on Lyrical Genius. Uh, leads from in second Broomfield present. Foxborough and Polish coming there quite stylishly up on the outside. Three to four links back to Golden Sovereign. So we will finally reach the fourth last. Oh, Lyrical yeah. Genius, Foxborough spearing through amongst horses. Broomfield present over on the far side in company with Polish as Foxborough under and Harry that is it. Job is done. beginning to assert here. So now, yes, I've gone in the reds, but it is because it is three miles, six furlongs. I cut 20% off the end. So if you work out what 20% is, it's a lot further. Um, so I had plenty and plenty of time to get out. Um, you, you'll see how much time is left. There's still plenty of time for um, 
uh, Foxborough to lose as well. But yeah, 13 quid on that one. That's right, I'm happy with that. Uh, I'm just going to show just as an example. Um, looks like he's well out in front. I don't know if there's any more jumps left. Yeah, it's got miles ahead. But um, yeah, you get one. Oh, it's absolutely murdered it. But um, yeah, you can see why I had that time, how much that race was left. But um, still don't want to go too far in the red because if you go too far in the red, um, it market the suspended. You can get one that jumps, you know, miles ahead like that. So it would have been fine pretty quick to get out anyway. If I wasn't going to get matched. As I thought I was going to, um, you know, within the time. So anyway, yeah, let's move on. That's it. They're coming in. No, way too keen Mark there. Too market in play. It's broken or released just before they got there, actually, and they'll quickly get that back up again. And the five runners will take a turn. The Edgar Wallace favourite here. And now, uh, I don't like this because the Beth Harris put the market the in play. And they'll just be asked to turn and walk they need in to again take it out of play. Runners. So yeah. I'm going to restart the race timer. Miles from Wicklow and Firak. Pick that up. And if they don't take it out so of play, then Betfair will screw this up. Any moment. Betfair, it's not in play. It's not in play. Five runners are in position once again. Come on, Betfair, sort it out. Put the market back. And out now of they're play. ready to go again. So, walking in, there's the different rules you see for a pre race and things. an end play market. Racing for the William Hill Epic Value Handicap Steeple Chase. 15 to be jumps. The Edgar Wallace on the outside of miles from Wickler. Oh, oh look, it has started fence. actually with that. You bet you gave it plenty oh, that's of air. Brilliant, look at that. And we have that is the in play marker, Firak, timer. But you can see that's actually started turn. with it. And the Huntingdon winner, miles from Wicklow and the, yellow, and the uh, blue colours. Red and yellow of the Edgar Wallace. Right, so we're looking for a market overreaction again. Unfortunately, with this as a two horse race, Blue you've got to be really careful. Debut, but these markets are extremely thin. Ogly, ogly! In the grey and red hoop jacket, a two time winner over Fender. Far side is Regal Blue, and this in between is, on. is Firak in the red and white colours. Fence so. number five, another plain one. The Edgar Wallace. 500 quid there. So. Up, gets over. Uh, oh, didn't get Wicklow. much, much. The other three, very much in close Could attendance. Nice Regal Blue on the far side, in behind you, Betcha and Firak. So the quintet come past us with a Should have traded it in down there. there. So, like I say, I am new to this, who has the advantage for this the sort Kim of strategy. I've only just thought it up in my head how I'm going to run it. So I'm still learning, unfortunately. But you can see I missed a hell of an opportunity. And other representative is Firak at the back of the field. Regal Blue, Nick Schofield's up against the rail now, moving into the second place. because it's a two-horse race, that sort of worries me a little bit as well. ...of Firak as they go around the turn. And they have six down the far side, ten left to jump in this William Hill Epic Value Handicap Steeple Chase. And it's the Edgar Wallace, Gavin Sheehan. All oh, the other runners doing It's over the next. You betcha, just drop to the back of the five runners there. We've on the inside, Regal Blue, taking more of an interest now in second place. Out wider, miles from Wicklow. And further to the widest of all with the Edgar Wallace. Firak comes next as they clear the open ditch. Where... Miles from Wicklow was untidy, and you betcha was slow at the back of the oh, field. I tried to take it out. So four Just more plane button. fences to jump down the far side. Regal Blue and the Edgar Wallace are the first two, then. There's a long way to go, don't Firak, forget. And then we so I'm Miles not concerned Wicklow, about it at all. The previous one was very low over that. You betcha again. They want to get an exit. Got over OK, but hasn't been that fluent in the last couple either. So the five runners... Head down yeah, towards the there. next. See, there's, there's just Edgar no money. Wallace, That's why the market moves so Regal crazy. Blue in second. Like this. On the inside. And then comes Miles from cash, Wicklow. We'll go in for more now. At the back of the five runners. Next plane fence coming up. The Edgar Wallace and Gavin Sheehan. Just about in I'm out of here, man. Firak's got notably closer under Sean O'Connor. And in between Regal Blue. Miles from Wicklow. And then so we have I'm not Betcher. concerned about this five by any means at the moment. The back is five out. The Edgar Wallace looking for a stride here. Jump that one well. Regal Blue is certainly warm to the task in second. Then Firak and Miles from Wicklow. And you betcha hasn't really travelled at all down the wish back. I'd more put into it. At the rear of the fields. So a long run towards the final four fences. The Edgar Wallace and Regal Blue 
have gone on then, with Miles from Wicklow trying to recover in third place. Firak now Come out of here, man. Bear in mind, it only takes a few minutes to get in. I mean, even if that does go on and win, begin the turn into the straight. It's the end there's of just no money. The lead then from Regal Blue in second so, place. Like I say, Miles I wasn't worried about it at all. With Firak still there, being pushed along. <laughs> sucker. So it's a bit on a race like this. Edgar Wallace. On a race like this, you definitely do want to be out early. You know, I mean, still, they've still got a long way to run, but because the odds can shift so friggin' quickly with no money, you can see that, look, look how these two are moving. Um, how they're swipping, changing odds so quickly. Look, Regal Blue up at 20s just then, and just come all the way down to um, falls again. So if something was to happen, you could get your money wiped out and it could win extremely quickly. So be careful of that. These thin races, um, do you know what I mean? Get out a lot sooner, a lot, hell of a lot sooner. But let's see Regal blow all the way back down again. It just touched, um, I, th I saw it touch at least four, maybe lower. Just then. Um, and a minute ago, it was right up there at hundreds. So that's how scary it can be. But, you know, if, if it done the same again, if, it, if, you know, if it can move that quick, it can move um, straight in as well. And uh, when you've got a race like an uphill finish, that like, it's coming in again, you can see by the line there, you can see what it moves in. See. But with these uphill finishes, market suspended. They're races where you're more likely to get um, something weird happen. Lee, don't believe. This is actually a three mile race because it comes up at 2 7 because that's what the fish it is. Next to the rail, listed as, looking out the rear is one for man. Uh, but it's uh, with the extra meters on top, you might as well say it's uh, three miles back straight now. Climbing the hill, fourth flight, then as they come towards it now, with my last Oscar down by two Just lengths, in case. took that ahead then of. Cowboy Cooper mistake at the back by De Quall there. Just had met it on the wrong stride, really. And then as they come up the hill, it's Velasco leading from my last Oscar. Cowboy Cooper, and you say it's over. Three at third and fourth. Followed then by one for Mama and De Quall in touch. But I might have been too place. greedy there, but if I can get it lower, Coming I will. Towards the home straight then, towards the fifth flight in this three miler. Class oh, five contest. Could have got matched at full zero. I don't regret that. Double his tally under rules. He's one from twenty-one Shit. so far. This seven-year-old in the colors of why did I bloody move it? The tombs and the black and white colors coming up towards the green. On the outside, then is my last Oscar for the Nicky Martin team. James Bowen in second. Cowboy Cooper on the inside of you. I've got to remember not to cancel off other bets closer to the end. But... Next, and then. Just pushed along the call match me up, match me up, match last me up. place. Getting a reminder as well. There's a circuit to go coming up towards the judge with a full circuit to go here in this three miler. Velasco then from my last Oscar. Cowboy Cooper and you say it's over. <laughs> Only a head between them. Wasn't much between them here last time either. And then one for Mamba in the green jacket. DeQual two legs away in last place. Racing away from us then having completed one circuit. They're past the halfway stage here in the lucky last, the last race of 2023 here at Hexham as they move down towards the sixth flight. So Velasco in front. My last I'm off. out of here, man. Strongly in second place. Flicking over it in third then as you say it's over with Cowboy Cooper and Craig Nickel looking for a double. Oh, fuck's sake. Brian Hughes, the right. champion on you say it's Where's over. It's together pay? on the score sheet here so far. But he might fancy his chances here. Then there's a break, then back in fifth place, then to one for Mama. And a call forget this is a very long race. To keep up the gallop on the horses ahead of him. Now they're turning up the hill. Moving up the hill towards the... Turning towards the back straight. A long way to go yet. And Yes, there is a long way to go yet. Yeah. I'm out of here, man. Money matched. Now his lead is about to three... Go on! Lengths, perhaps. My last Oscar, Cowboy Cooper, and you say it's over. And a little clutch of three there behind the leader as they move down towards the seventh flight here. Velasco comes towards it. Don't forget, there's still a hell of a long way to go in this race. Even though we're in the outside. In the red. My last Oscar, Cowboy Cooper, still traveling well for Craig Nickel. And just beginning to get shaken up now. One for Mama, and DeQual is trying to get into the contest as they go towards the next flight. 
number eight, which is three from the finish. Still a long way to go into the setting sun. Velasco then from Come on. over and my last Oscar. Cowboy is on the leading three with every chance. They've opened up a gap now. De Quall and one for Mama as they continue to race now down the hill, okay. grabbing, filling those lungs up with... Still plenty of time of oxygen to just they flick up there. ...to the finish here. So, it's still Velasco's made just about every yard so far, Nathan Mosgrop, leading right. from... Usain and you'll be surprised how much time is left over, but I'm in the red zone. That's the only jacket. reason I did it. It's a free minor, why I stayed late. I'm out now, 15 pounds. Still sticking up behind them is to call um, just by getting... And um, just by getting value on these prices, I don't care who wins the race so, now. You see how much they're moving around, but here. now Velasco it's too dangerous. One just gets away or something falls now. You ain't gonna have much time to get out. Because I know the ground is slow as well. I know that this race is still gonna be a struggle. And it's Velasco gamely clinging I think Hexton's another uphill finish, isn't it? My last Oscar and the pushed along Cowboy Cooper. As they race in towards the home straight so, now, yeah, furlong and a half left to go. And how much time we actually have left, so... Flight. Stamina really kicking Okay, you've got that uphill bit and there. My last Maybe Oscar, not quite and you finish, say it's but... over. My last Oscar striking the front for the first time. Pressing on here for James Bowen. Coming down towards the final flight. Oh, he's really opening up all of a sudden. My last Oscar. And there you go. So you can see how much time I had to get out before well, um, it got Cowboy Cooper, really dangerous. Well, I mean, it was dangerous when I when it got out, but it wouldn't stages, have been any longer than that. And, uh, he's there you go, 15 squid. Stone in this ground. That's um, a um, with this race, because it's uh, it's a bumper, Hoggly, um, doggly. there's not going to be much money or interest in it, so you've got to be really careful in these sort of races. Um, definitely out early on it. I might have missed a little opportunity here, look. Lighter of the two greys. So now moving into the back straight and out in the lead, it is Matthias. Yeah, it's shows with an advantage there. of now nearly two lengths over Quebecois in second place. Third is disputed by Drum Heller on the inside of Kalahari King and Silver Cord. Ilfonce on the outside of Breeden Hill Dart in midfield in company as well with Demelza Khan. Moving target is in that little cluster as well. Shame on. Indeed, the second Can't half of the field are very well bunched indeed. There, you know. Jack Black just relegating Nelson Shadow. Come on, to just be pop down and match me. As they run down the hill. Go, go, go. Oh. On the descent, Quebecois. So frustrating. There's only three in front of me. And Silver Cord is right there on the outside. A couple that have How made annoying. ground in the last half How hour. Both on the outside. Ilfonce in the strike. So you can see that I, would, I could have made like and Breeden Hill Dart, Lucy Gardner in the purple and yellow. But they're still tightly grouped with Kalahari sort of King, and there. then drum Heller towards the inside of Demelza Khan, Jack Black moving target, and Nelson Shadow is at the back of the pack. So they're climbing uphill, and we're reaching the halfway stage now. And out in the lead, it is still Matthias with the white stripe on the face, attended by Quebecois in the all orange colours, and then towards the outside, both Silver Cord and Ilfonce. Kalahari King comes next, having made ground, Breeden Hill Darts just pushed along to hold the position. One that has made ground out wide is Jack Black in the chessboard colours with the yellow sleeves, just ahead of Drum Heller who's pushed along. A moving target is the one that has begun to lose touch, is seven to eight lengths behind the back end now of Demel. Oh, yeah. Also Nelson Shadow as the remaining runners must cluster up. Moving target and also just dropping off the back Demel Khan, only briefly though. And just actually just changed course amongst runners to Melza Khan. Drum Heller is being ridden along. So a lot of chances here as they turn for home. With Matthias, Quebecois, Ilfonce, the front wave, in company as well with Silver Cord. Kalahari King, Jack Black right round the outside from Breeden Hill Dart. Then Nelson Shadow. I'm out of here, man. Uh, Demelza Khan. And the only one out of touch is Moving Target. So round the home turn, Matthias, pressed now by Quebecois. Kalahari King travels well in third. Absolutely guided about that, Shadows Matthias. I ground. should have got in there. Jack Dart. <laughs> really sure. I'm going to leave it. Alfonso on the retreat. Drum Heller is hard at work. Eames, so is Demelza Khan as this leading group is thinned out by Matthias and Quebecois, Ooh. who are now approaching the final three and a half furlongs. Quebecois on the right hand side, moving to Matthias Yay, behind these Kalahari King it. and Jack Black. <laughs> no, and this quartet have now though. broken away from the others. But Quebecois appears to be travelling quite strongly for Harry Cobden. Away to the right hand side, Jack Black trying to deliver Look a challenge. Look at the moving Houston around. To try and press Matthias for second, but at the moment. Quebecois well is travelling strongly with a two-length advantage. So, 
So, yeah, I don't know if there's much left now. Let's have a quick look. Are we done for the day? Uh, I'm certainly not looking at Dundalk. Uh, Kempton would be too short of races for that. So, yes, that is... Oh, hang on. What's the time? No, that's gone. Um, yep, that's me done for the day. So, not too Market bad. suspended. Um, that'll be, what, about 60 quid profit or something like that. Not to shy off. I'll show you the results in a second so you can see that that matches up with what I've shown you on my trades. Hope you've enjoyed that. Any questions, queries, whatever, give me a shout. Um, I think I missed a few opportunities today, but I'm working on this low strategy. If you're wondering why I'm telling you the low strategy, it's because the more liquidity in there, um, in the markets, that actually would help me. So get on and do it as well if you want to, but uh, make sure you know what you're doing um, if you're going to do it. I don't want to be responsible for anyone losing money. All right, I'll show you the results in a minute. Okay, guys, there's the results for the day. Just to prove it's genuine, it matches up with all the races. Uh, 10 markets shown on there. There was 11 markets. Um, one market I didn't get a match on. Um, so, yeah, that will add up to what you've seen. I hope you've enjoyed that. Any questions, queries, leave a comment, drop me an email, whatever you like. If you need a copy of the race timer, um, then by all means, just drop me an email for that as well. Other than that, best of luck in the markets. Hope I've helped you out today. See you again soon. Bye-bye. Introducing Geek's Toy Trading Software, the fastest, most customizable and most popular software for betting and trading on Betfair and BetDAC. Designed by professional traders for you. Key features include unlimited desktop settings and the ability to create custom profiles to suit every user's needs. unbeatable speed, real-time prices, and one-click betting. Unique management of multiple markets. You can bet or trade on multiple sporting events simultaneously. Support for eight languages. Context-driven help on every window. Dutching and bookmaking, training mode, advanced charting, enhanced navigation, support for Betfair coupons, stop loss and more. Geek's Toy, possibly the best Betfair and BetDAC trading software in the world.